king and his beautiful queen. But they don't live alone in that castle of stone. There are quite a few more to be seen. Two royal children, a prince and princess, give a helping hand to the queen. While the king has three pets, they're the strangest you've met. Three dragons, all scaly and green. To visit this palace, we don't have to go through woods or along rocky paths. There's a much quicker way, we just have to say, let's go nuts. Let's go nuts. Hello. Let's see which number our song is about today. There are one, two, three dragons. So today's song is about the number three. When I was in town the other day, I saw a band and it started to play. There were clarinets and flutes and euphoniums and at the back of the band marched three big drums. There were three big drums playing boom, boom, boom. Yes, one, two, three were the drums I could see. There were clarinets and flutes and euphoniums and at the back of the band marched three big drums. drums played a tune that was different from the rest. The sound that they made, I thought it was the best. I watched them all go by and I listened to them play. A boom, 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 they went all the way. There were three big drums playing boom, boom, boom. Yes, one, two, three were the drums I could see. There were clarinets and flutes and euphoniums and at the back of the band marched three big drums. That band was making a lot of noise, wasn't it? Especially those three drummers with their three big drums. I can't think of anything that makes as much noise as three big drums, unless it's the king's three pet dragons when they're roaring at the top of their voices. Mind you, the dragons aren't making a lot of noise in today's story because they're not feeling very well. Today's story is called Three Squeaky Dragons. Everywhere is very quiet today, said the king. There's something the matter. Then he realized what it was. It's the dragons. I can't hear the dragons roaring today, he said. So out he went to see them. They were sitting outside their caves looking very sorry for themselves. What's the matter with you today, asked the king. Why are you so quiet? The dragons tried to roar. They did their very best because they wanted to please the king, but all they could do was squeak. Oh dear, cried the king, you've all got sore throats. The prince and the princess came out to look at the dragons. How can we make them better, asked the princess, and everyone looked very worried. I know what to do, said the king. They need to be tucked up in nice warm beds in the palace for a day or two. In bed, said the princess. In bed, said the prince. Yes, in bed, said the king. And we shall need three beds. A small one, a bigger one, and a very big one. So the dragons were brought into the palace and tucked up in bed. But the next day, they weren't any better. The king knew that as soon as he saw them. Good morning, he boomed brightly, ignoring the dragons' long, miserable faces. Good morning, dragons. Up you get and let me hear a lovely roar. The dragons sat up and tried to roar. Then they tried again. We can't, they whispered at last. And it was quite true. No matter how hard they tried to roar, all they could do was squeak. Then the queen came to see the dragons. Gently, she stroked their necks. At last, she said, I have an idea. What the dragons need is something to keep their throats warm. The queen went over to a chest of drawers and pulled out three woolly scarves. One was short, one was a bit longer, and one was very, very long. Here we are, just what we need, she said. Three warm woolly scarves for three very sore throats. The queen wrapped the scarves around the dragon's necks. There, she said, that will soon make you better. The dragons wore the scarves all that day. 
They felt warm and snug. Everyone in the palace kept listening and wondering if the dragons were going to roar, but there wasn't a sound. The king and queen kept peeping into the room. I'm sure that they'll soon be better, the queen said anxiously. Oh, maybe, maybe, the king replied, wishing that he'd thought of the scarves first. The next day, the dragons tried to roar, but no matter how hard they tried, all they could do was squeak. The prince and princess wondered if there was anything that they could do to make the dragons better. There must be something that will cure them, said the prince. I know, said the princess. Come with me. She led the way down into the royal kitchens and found an old recipe book. It was called Recipes for Dragons. Quickly, she turned over the pages until she found one that said, Medicine for Sore Throats. This is it, she said. And whilst the princess read out the recipe, the prince carefully mixed some honey, some lemon juice, some raspberry jam, and just a little ice cream. There, it's ready, he said at last. Now we need three bowls for three dragons, said the prince. A small one, a bigger one, and a very big one. And three spoons, said the princess. A big one, a smaller one, and a very small one. Carefully, they carried the medicine into the dragons, who were sitting up in bed, still squeaking unhappily. This will make you better, said the prince. Open your mouths wide, said the princess. The dragons did as they were told. They took their medicine and they licked their lips because they liked it so much. The next morning, everyone in the palace heard a very loud noise. It woke up the king. It woke up the queen. It woke up the prince and princess. Who is making that terrible noise in my palace, the king asked angrily, and how dare they wake me up? The queen began to smile. The prince and princess rushed in to see the dragons. We did it, they yelled. We made the dragons better. And the dragons roared and roared. And when the king came in and saw who it was that was making all the noise, he didn't mind at all. I've got some pictures of dragons here. Look, they're just like the dragons that the king has as pets in our story today. I've got some pictures of other things as well. Shall we have a look at them? I've got a small dragon a medium-sized dragon and a large dragon and a small hat it's a sun hat and a medium-sized hat and a large hat and a small pair of sunglasses a medium pair of sunglasses and a large pair of sunglasses and a small ice cream a medium-sized ice cream and a large ice cream well I've never seen a dragon wearing a sun hat and a pair of sunglasses, and eating an ice cream all at the same time. And I don't expect you have either. I wonder what they'd look like. I think I know how I can find out. First, I'll give the small dragon a small hat, a small pair of sunglasses, and a small ice cream. Then I'll give the medium-sized dragon his hat, his medium-sized sunglasses, and his medium-sized ice cream. And then I'll give the large dragon a large hat a large pair of sunglasses and a large ice cream. There. A small dragon, a medium-sized dragon, and a large dragon. And they're each wearing their hats, wearing their sunglasses, and each one of them is eating an ice cream. Bye-bye. <laughs> Four cooks and their cookery books And to five little kittens Meow! Goodbye to six horses Seven drummers too Eight soldiers and guard by the path Goodbye to nine ducks Till again... <laughs>